presenters on Twitter and online. So Debbie, if you're ready now, I think we're going to be audibly putting our hands together and give a very warm and caring OER welcome under quite difficult and unusual circumstances, but nonetheless, welcome Verena and Rob. Hello there. Hello. Um, welcome. Rob, can you talk? Just checking in. Yep, mic's on. I think I'm okay to talk. I think I'm on. Okay, we're good to go. Welcome and thank you for that warm um, welcome, Marin and Deb, and all the help and support. We're going to get going right away and talking about open of, op, using an ethics of open education framework to co-design an open learning design experience. I'm Brina Roberts, and Dr. Rob Farrell is also here. Whoops, there we go. Um, the Ethics and Technology course is a graduate course, and it's one of four courses in the Leading in a Digital Age topic in the Workland School of Education. Um, in this particular course, the students demonstrate their digital literacy abilities and all that was there in the course outcome was the ability to ethically share and build knowledge collaboratively in online environments by engaging in an active participant as an active participant in co-designing their learning experience with the instructor and student peers. So we decided to do this by designing a collaborative press book with chapters that talk about ed tech ethics. And that's how Dr. Rob Farrow got involved. Um, first of all, I just want to mention the principles of open learning design that uh, came out of my dissertation research. And so these, uh, these principles guided, um, so I expanded from my dissertation into this graduate course. And my dissertation research was in K-12 secondary environments. So that's really important to think about that, that I've been able to take the same principles from secondary or primary into higher ed um, and you can read some of the principles here co-designing personally relevant learning pathways collaboratively and individually sharing experiences um, learners transparently demonstrating their learning in meaningful ways at integrating curriculum and competencies and open learning occurs in stages and continuums that you're going to see a little bit more about and is a personal learning experience that transcends formal learning. So it goes beyond the course in multiple ways and open learning emphasizes the learning process as opposed to a product and yet we were making a press book the whole time in order to build upon and share community knowledge. And this is Rob. So Rob, can you explain a bit about what is the framework for ethics of open education? Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, hopefully I can. Um, <laughs> so the idea for this um, paper where I um, kind of proposed a framework for people to use um, to try to understand the sort of ethical dimensions of their open education project actually came um, partly from work done in the OER Research Hub, which um, was a research project from approximately 2015 to 2016, which evolved into the Open Education Research Hub, which is where I currently do most of my work. Um, and in that project, we, we encountered um, various kind of challenges to do with the openness of what we were doing. Um, so that was you know, partly to do with doing research in different countries at the same time, respecting the institutional policies that people had about how people participated in research, what happens with the data and that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> we also had issues around um, whether people could reasonably consent to some of the stuff that we were proposing with the data that we were taking. You know, did they understand what it meant when we said, we're going to release this on a CC0 license or something like that? Um, so we encountered quite a few issues um, just at a practical level. Um, my background is in um, philosophy. And prior to joining the Open University, which is where I am now, I was a PhD candidate at the University of Essex. Um, so I taught um, ethics for quite a few years while I was a um, graduate teaching assistant. Um, and I had it as one of my kind of areas of, of specialization, if you like. Um, so when it came to doing this um, work, there were basically sort of three considerations. One was trying to um, provide sort of more up-to-date guidance for other researchers on what it means to work within within a kind of open practice environment and what kind of ethical dimensions openness can uh, bring to a research project. Um, there was also the idea that um, some people who are doing open research might be doing it 
entirely outside the boundaries of institutions and beyond institutional oversight. So for instance, they could be just working with open data sets that are already out there in, in the commons. They're not attached to an institution necessarily. Um, but we want them to be able to um, act with the same sort of judgments and the same sort of processes as someone who's going through an IRB or an ethics board. So um, it's a kind of checklist as, at one level for, for those people to try and understand you know, where are the ethical dimensions in, in what you're doing. Um, the other element, I suppose, was uh, to do with uh, trying to communicate some of the vocabulary and sort of con the concepts of ethical philosophy to an ed tech audience more widely and trying to get away from the kind of uh, tick box, you know, checklist of um, uh, risk assessment and that kind of thing as a way of dealing with ethics within a, within a, a technology project. and um, trying to yeah sort of attenuate and draw attention to uh, those ethical dimensions um, again by, by using that, those kind of um, those concepts and, and the vocabulary borrowed from um, ethical philosophy so um, so in a way this um, this framework was designed to sort of crystallize some of the work that we were doing also to push it forward in a sort of theoretical theoretical direction but the main purpose of it was to be a tool for others to use so um, uh, it's a fairly flexible tool and some people have, have, have already used it and I'm quite interested to hear actually how it was used in this instance. Thanks Rob, sorry. And um, so Rob and I met at, or no, we've known each other for a while, but we connected at OER uh, 19, I guess, no, or Open Ed 19 in Phoenix. And he taught me a bit about ethics before I taught my course because I decided to use the open learning design intervention, which again came from my doctoral research as a way to think about how I was designing this course to integrate the ethical uh, framework. So you'll see I have the frame, uh, the intervention below and things I had to think about were the ethical considerations for instructors, students, feedback loops, multiple perspectives, working with the library, limited open awareness, common context textbooks, creating an open textbook together, activities that promote connections and interactions in formal and informal um, contexts. And the way I managed to integrate them was the first thing I did was I created a, in our webinar, we had a Padlet, and I had the students give their impressions of what they thought about, about ethical topics in educational technology. So this was the initial, you could say, Padlet or idea board from what the students, their perspectives of what they thought about ethics. I'm seeing all the spelling mistakes as we go along here. Then we did a participatory activity, and you can link to all of these, and I'll send out the links as well. And the activity I had been um, tweeting, those of you who know me, I tweet a lot. I have been tweeting about EdTech ethics since last June. And in, um, in the, I gave a wide variety of examples, and I asked the students to choose three. They had to summarize them, and then using um, Rob's framework, the first question was they had to split it up into the three theoretical approaches and tell me, from their perspective, what did that topic consider or which way we could we could think about it? So we were very theoretical when we first started. And then I took his framework and I split it up into how we could split it up into our chapter. So how could we write a chapter using his framework? And yes, I understand his framework was based on research and we were bringing it into considering um, ed tech issues and concerns, not necessarily research, but ultimately the students will be completing research on many of these topics. So it's really interesting the way that they've kind of thought about things from an ethical perspective from the beginning. So they start with an introduction and then we had section one, section two, section three, and section four in their, in their chapters and conclusion. And section one is a description of the ethical issue with the full disclosure and explanation. Section two is um, focusing on privacy, data security, and informed consent. Section three is focusing on educational integrity by avoiding harm and minimizing risk. And section four was focusing on respect for participants, autonomy, and independence. 
Specifically, I set them up as you see here, and within each of these sections, we did participatory activities to encourage them and provoke them into thinking about these topics and focus areas in deeper and more meaningful ways. So they had four open and participatory learning activities while writing their open chapter, and they do a final reflection. The activities included the collaboration with everybody thinking about the EdTech ethics um, um, topics from the Twitter feed. The second one was doing their own Twitter chat. The third activity was a visitor and resident map. And the fourth is um, a consideration of their pr professional learning network. So the whole course is over 12 weeks and it was split into three week sections where the first week was the instructor guided inquiry and provocation as I explained and that is where they did the participatory activity we guided and focused them on a topic the second week they went with their peers and focused on on getting some peer feedback and review about their idea and the third week they were um, they had to ask someone outside the course someone maybe they worked with or someone beyond the course about their idea and we did this in four sections iteratively over and over throughout the course at the end of the third week they would hand in their draft to me and so i in using a formative assessment um, technique i've given them formative assessment about their chapters throughout the entire journey so this is just an idea. The EdTech Ethics Chat was actually the first, um, there's some participants actually in this uh, chat today. Um, the, it was a Canadian chat where anyone in EdTech or anyone teaching EdTech across Canada was welcome to come in and we worked together collaboratively to create an, the first EdTech Ethics Twitter chat. Yep, Helen would be one of the participants. So we modeled open practices while talking about ethics, and then we showed them how to do um, and consider data analysis, um, looking at some of the wonderful data that came out of the Twitter chat. Now, this is important because um, some of the student reflections started to, you could start to see where they were thinking about ethics in different ways. For example, this student missed the Twitter chat, but she went in and saw all the data and saw everything that it because we shared it with her. And then she pretended to write her little tweet, which is over the amount that she could write. But the point is, she pretended to say, yes, what are the ethical implications here? And then I was able to see how she was integrating ethical ideas into her reflective process. So then I was, so as an instructor, I was able to see how they were integrating the ethical framework in their um, their chapter, but I'm also able to see about how they're seeing it in the big picture with different topics um, in authentic and relevant ways. Um, the reflections, these are reflections that the students would send to me through emails. The ethical framework gave them confidence, and so they describe even when I got pushback from my admin, I kept going because I was able to talk things out with you. Um, she writes, it's, I was able to write my thoughts down in the chapter, so the chapter became very reflective as well, and to see that I'm not crazy and being cautious, um, as, as she would think, um, but it also helped to see the other side as well. So the frame provides the lens in which to see things from multiple perspectives and just to end with so these are our chapter topics and now we're in the process of their finishing their chapters and we did get some grant funding which is really exciting to get some support in creating um, our collaborative press book which will be ready in the next year we'll say um, and you can just look at some of the topic ideas here and see how how we have, where things have come since the beginning and using the framework to guide our learning. And that is it. Do we have any questions? That's hard to do. I'll That's amazing. In. Thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. That's really interesting. And I have to say, I've been following the EdTech Ethics hashtag with great joy. I've been finding it so useful. And um, great to see all this sharing going on as well. And thank you to all of our fellow presenters who are able to join into the chat. 
and able to still give you the round of applause that you deserve so much. So I'm just going to wait a moment to see if there's any questions for you on Twitter and also invite fellow presenters to raise their hand if they want to make comments or questions. <laughs> 